All right, I want, I want to uh, comment a, a little bit here. I, I, Dilworth's theorem published in 1950. Galley and Milgram published their work in 1960. But the Hungarian community has uh, been pretty vocal that Galay actually had this result in the late 40s, and he couldn't convince Milgram to publish it. And so there are some Hungarians whom I know and respect who think that Dilworth's theorem should be called the Galay Milgram theorem. But uh, I know some good friends of Dilworth, and I, I, wouldn't, I can't say that I, I'm a good friend of his. I, I knew him. But Dilworth knew uh, what we call Dilworth's theorem much earlier as well. He delayed publishing it because he was trying to prove something much harder. And you can check out his 1950 paper. So yeah, while it's correct that Galay and Milgram knew it, well, Dilworth knew it also. So it's fair, I think it's fair to, to attribute the result to Dilworth. A whole bunch of people, Dilworth, Fulkerson, Galay and Milgram, and tons of other people, knew about the dual version. The dual version, a height, the poset of height h can be partitioned into h antichains. But they didn't think it was worth writing down. When was Mirsky's theorem published? You remember the date? 1971. 21 years after Dilworth. When Dilworth heard that Mirsky had published this, it's reported that he said one of the two cuss words he ever said in his life. And to say, what, what a waste of, of space. So uh, after all these years, many researchers don't say there's a Mirsky theorem uh, because it was well known to many people long before that, and so they just talk about it in the form of dual Dilworth and don't attribute it to anybody. Question? Well, Mirsky was a, uh, he was a fine scientist, but why, why he wanted to write this down? And it's a one-page statement. I mean, I, I, on our slides it was one sentence. Just recursively strip off the minimal elements. But you see, there's no, there's no dual notion. You can't say recursively strip off the chain over here. There isn't a chain over here. Look at these pictures. Look at, look at that picture. Does the chain nine look like the ch chain over there or chain one? No, it's all over the place. There's no, there's no dual notion about going left to right or right to left. There is from bottom to top, or top to bottom, but not left to right and right to left. So there's a real theorem with Dilworth. The dual version is a trivial observation. OK. So he, a heads up kind of thing. The last several times I've taught this course, I've geared the last six weeks or so into working through a body of work that at the end of the day, you can actually do Dilworth's theorem. We're going to do that this year and a little bit more. So a phrase that you're going to see is, how do you solve the Dilworth problem? That means, how do you find the width, and how do you find a partition into W chains? And we'll revisit that several times. And along the way, we're going to learn about network flows. We're going to learn about matroids and greedoids and spanning trees and exchange operations and many other things. But keep in mind, 
that the Dilworth problem, which you've learned the theorem, but you haven't learned the technique, you haven't learned any algorithm, is something that will be in the back of our minds as we progress. Make sense? Okay, so you're going to go home and you're going to study these slides, you're going to revisit those pictures, and make sure that everything that we've done today makes sense. And I, re I really strongly encourage you to sort through this proof that we've just done today to make sure that you understand it. And I'll see you on Thursday.